Hey everyone, I hope you're doing marvelously well. Nah, it doesn't work for me. I am not as cool as Warren. I'm just not. I hope you're doing good. How about that? <laughs> All right, so what I wanted to do today is I've had multiple requests for like a favorite drum plug-in or, or hardware uh, video. And as you know, that man, that's, that's really hard to narrow, narrow things down and pick a top five or whatever. So this is going to be a top probably whatever. What I'm thinking about doing is sticking to software world because it's, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult to patch different hardware pieces and give you side-by-side -side examples. But I love my Audioscape decomp. I love my distressors. I love all my 1176s. I've got great stuff over here, but let's stick in software world. All right, so let's listen to just a little bit of some raw drum tracks here. It's a good recording, but they need some refinement. Okay, if I open a mix first thing in the morning, and, and my job is to make this a record, my first go-to is the fact that I use a multi-bus method. If you follow me, you know this. Treatment comes on the bus from the very beginning. And my current kind of go-to favorite saturator device is the SSL X saturator. And so I'm going to bypass it and then I'm going to turn it on and you'll see before I ever make any decisions about EQ or anything like that, I, I'm not, you know, haven't even started thinking about SSL versus Neve versus API. Um, it's just going to be better. Here we go. It got, I know it gets just a little bit louder. I've pulled back the gain a little bit, so I was trying to compensate for it uh, a little bit, but it's more than just volume. You could hear the impact of the drums, the, 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 the sizzle from the transformer, you know, adding some, adding some punch, but also it's seeming like it adds, added some air. So it's 5% better right out of the gate to me. And now, okay, you're like, why is plugin number one for you, you know, on your best of list, uh, the SSL X Saturator? Well, first of all, there's several really great ones. Uh, True Iron from Kazrog. I know you can go down this list of like, well, this is the one I use. And there's not a right or, or wrong. But the reason I use this one, not only does it sound great just like this, but I've got some other options that I can, that I can choose. And I want to show you um, option number one. Here it's called shape. If you look right here where I'm moving my mouse around, I can turn this thing counterclockwise and it kind of rounds or mellows the sound of the drums. It kind of pushes them further away from the listener. If I really wanted to get chippy and hard, like I think that's the word I'm, I'm wanting to use is hard sounding. Um, I can move it clockwise and it gets harder, just, just more, more impact, more, more attack. So let me, I like it in right here where it's at, to be honest. That's my starting point on almost every song. But I want you to hear the variety that it is able to give you. So it's not just volume, it's making more attack, which makes, of course, the snare drum and transient things louder. And it's just a really cool tool. No, I haven't found that in any other plugin. We can also change between valve based, uh, you know, tube based sound to, you know, like transformers, you know, uh, solid state. Um, this depth knob is cool. It's just, it's just a very cool plugin. All right, let's go to plugin number two. Sticking with my method of making the sound better on a bus before I ever touch an individual drum. Yeah, we're gonna go with plugin number two as a compressor. And again, I've got numerous that I use in my template, but I would say well over half the time, this is my guy, especially on aggressive music. This is the Brainworks uh, Shadow Hills. The thing is, it's not just the Shadow Hill mastering compressor, it's the Class A version. It's a, it's a solid state, tighter sound to me. And it just adds an impact to the drums that it's hard to explain until you hear it. So let's hear it. Here we go. The attack of the kick, the attack of the snare got that much more important, right? Uh, but we're also controlling it. And, and one thing I'll show you, if I remember to, is to come back at the end. And as I dial in more 
proper drum tones on the individual tracks, this continually makes a bigger impact on the sound. Favorite number three. Let's go down the line to an EQ. Uh, again, using the multibus method, this I'm hearing this stuff before I ever touch an individual fader. And I've got several that I really, really love, as I'm sure you guys do too. But there's something I keep coming back to on this particular plugin. And this is the Plugin Alliance Lindell, I think it's called the TE100. But I've got this little preset here. It, it's a tube based unit that just sounds big. So I'm adding weight and size to the drums. It's a little difficult to understand when you first start using it. You select your frequency up here for the high frequency boost. You select your low frequency boost right here. And for your mids, if you're gonna use them, you set your, your point. So instead of choosing A frequency, hey, I'm gonna boost at 2K, you say, I'm gonna boost at you know, uh, 85, uh, 850 cycles and at 1.7 you know, or, or 6K or whatever. And so, you know, mathematically, you have to figure out where the middle of that is. And, but that's figuring, you know, that's telling you how broad your your cue is. So it's it's a little complex, but it's worth it. Uh, and I'll show you the difference. I'll uh, let a couple bars roll, then engage it. Tiny bit more impact, a little bit more air, a little bit more punch on the kick drum before I ever touch anything down line. So let me show you now those three things added up. Okay, here we go. One more time, I'll bypass all three of them. We've made like a 15% difference in the sound already. Uh, another thing that I like to do, and I see that that unbypassed uh, while, I was, while I was working, is I like to control my drum bus on the drum bus prior to hitting my stereo master, meaning a, a a, just set a limiter. And all I'm wanting it to do is capture a couple peaks here and there that would hit the stereo bus and negatively affect it. I'm not actually trying to limit so much as just a handful of things here and there. So it's really making no impact on the sound. You see, I, I, I use the transparent setting. All right, now let's dive into the individual channel strips. I am very much still a console guy. And that's the way I came up. And I, I still have a fascination with solid state logic, API, and Neve. I mean, there's, it, it, it's not just EQ. It's EQ with flavor. And it does something to the sound that a digital you know, stock EQ or digital uh, vanilla uh, EQ, as versatile as they may be, just can't do. And the punch that I get, so product, I guess this is number five, is SSL channel strips. Um, I get a gate, which is really usable on a lot of things. I get that channel strip compressor, which we'll we'll start diving in. is such a It's just such a wonderful compressor. Uh, so over uh, underused, I think, under uh, appreciated by a lot of younger guys that never got to use the consoles. That that little compressor is amazing. But the punch of this EQ is just something magical. And uh, now this is the actual Solid State Logic brand Channel Strip 2. I've been using a lot of those because I have their UC1 and so I can use hands-on, but I'm not gonna use that right now, it, just so it, you know, help you follow the mouse and kind of see kind of some of the things I'm doing. We'll dial in just a couple drums just to get the feel of the sound of the unit and then we'll switch to another product, okay? Here's the kick drum. Let's add a little attack. Let's cut out some of the sub lows up to about 30. That's a common thing for me on drums. We can always add a little air, you know, up at, uh, around the 8K if we want to. Okay, so before and after. And you see how fast and intuitive that was. That, that's what I love about channel strips, console channel strips. Great sound, great sound. Let, let's do the same thing. Let's kind of stick with the SSL channel strip and let's do the snare drum. OK, 
Okay, let's cut everything below about 80 cycles out. Nice. Let's add just a little low end body. Boom. I mean, we've already got a great sound. Now, the ch let, let me dial into the channel strip compressor just for a minute. Basically, I kind of start at three to one. Uh, that's kind of my go-to. Fastest release possible, because on drums, I want it I want it to release and bring up the sustain. So that way, that's how we get the size. You know, where on vocals, a lot of times we're using a slower release on drums. Most of the time, fast release. Um, here we go. A listen to the attack. A difference. I'm going to turn the dynamics off and then on. Now we do get the way SSLs work. As you in, increase compression, it's got an auto makeup gain, and it gets louder. But it actually gets louder than what what you're reducing. Don't let that fool you, because there's a thing. The thing about it is the the SSL makeup gain has a sound, and it's it's, it's actually very useful. So you can just trim it here, but still take advantage of the, the the sound that's coming out on the other end being better. All right, here we go. Pretty cool, isn't it? All right, so let's dial in a little gate, you know, just to get out some of the, the ring of the hi-hat and various things like that. So let's let's take it down to about 11 dB. Uh, this, should, this should work right here. Let's try it. Okay, cool. Let's set the fast attack. Cool. To me, that's that, it's a, it's just a, a really a, a great tool that I have all that you know in one plugin. Uh, that's what one of the things I love about channel strips. So let's go to the overheads and and let's dial in the SSL and do that thing that they do. Dial out some real lows. Pretty cool sound. All it's going to need is some fat. On, on overheads, I use the fast attack because the snare drum that's coming in, we want the body of it, but not as much of the attack because we're getting the attack on the close mic. So that's kind of, uh, again, that's a like a three to one, four to one kind of thing. We'll just start right there. And fast release generally is where I'm going to start on this type of a song. I went way overboard just so you could hear that compressor doing its thing. I love this channel strip compressor. Before and after. Just a little crispy, so I'll turn that down. So let's do this. Let's, um, I don't have anything in that row, right? So let's bypass the treatment that I did on the SSL on the kick, snare, overheads. And I, while I've got them in solo, then activate the SSLs, and we'll see how much difference we made. Just just a couple of little quick, instant, you know, instinctual decisions. Whoa! <laughs> I mean, that that's to me, that's the power of SSL. That that's punching you in the mouth, and that's what SSL does. It just wham. I mean, it it it's just a sound. Okay, so the thing is, not every song, not every source. Do I want the, uh, even though that may be my starting spot, I, I just love the, the, you know, I love working on SSLs. I love everything about them. Much in the way of our heroes did, we had a select number of outboard pieces behind us or beside us or whatever that we would patch in on certain things. And number one on that list just about was Neve, right? Or, you know, we, we've all, we all know that name. We, we, 1073s, 1081s, all that stuff is legendary to us. And just like the SSL did, it has an impact on the sound. We're not just adding EQ, we're adding Neve EQ, and it has a sound. But one of the, one of the reasons uh, that I have been using the Kit 73 um, is because of the preamp section. So even if I don't use the EQ, I can dial in some preamp gain uh, and just turn on the auto gain feature right here, and the, it just gets better. Okay, so ch check this out. We'll, go to, we'll switch right here to mic.
I mean, do you, you hear that, right? Listen, listen, before and after, and it's it's just like we, we you know we're cutting it hotter, but we're not getting that negative consequence of, of more snare bleed coming in or distortion and that kind of a thing. Ready? Yeah, drop the mic. I mean, it's just such a great thing. But let's also use the EQ just to kind of see, you know, the sound shaping possibilities that an Eve has. On a kick drum, you always go to 360. I mean, just almost always. Every once in a while, you use the 700 on some jazz drums and stuff. But for the most part, just go right to 360 and start cutting. And I'll, But I'll boost it first so you can hear. So that's what we're going to try to get rid of. Just preamp gain, just one EQ move, check it out. By getting rid of that, that just that little muddy part there in the lower, uh, you know, in the lower mids, um, it sounds punchier on the low end and more, it, the attack becomes more prominent. But let's still dial in a little bit more attack and let's also go down here to 60K, or I'm sorry, 60 cycles and add a little low end. Hear the low end. I mean, that's the thing that the Neve has. It's just got this massive low end. And so sometimes what I'll do is I will decide to put the Neve, and the reason I left this space up here in the top left-hand corner is I will put the, a Neve inserted before my SSL, but still follow it with an SSL. So I get that Neve thing followed by the SSL uh, surgical, uh, you know, if I want to get really surgical with the attack and really dial in what I'm looking for. Uh, that like a knee you can't do because it's too broad stroke. Now, that's a really powerful thing, okay? So I don't know what number that is, but whatever number that is, uh, <laughs> that's my favorite, that number. Okay, so let's bypass the knee on the, on the kick and let's go to the snare drum and just hear what it does there. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put on auto gain, put it in mic gain, and I'm going to get more of the, the, just the tone of the, of the knee. Let's hear the difference before and after with just the gain. Now it is bringing up, you know, the hi hat in there with it, so that's something we'd have to gate out. But in in modern music production of this type, we're generally using a snare sample anyway, so um, you know that that's less of a big deal. All right, so let's add a little bit of EQ because I want you to hear the high end of a Neve um, because it's a special thing. You add that with a little on, on, on for me it's either 110 or 220 on on the, on the snare drum it's always just boost a little of that and then turn the uh, turn the uh, high pass filter up to 80 and you're, you're kind of on your way now you can go up to around 700 sometimes I go to 700 cycles and cut a little bit and let me show you what that sounds like this drum is not really a problem, but sometimes it is. I just take just a tiny bit of that out. And the other option on a Neve is to add attack. Instead of removing 700 cycles, you can add a little of this. That impact of the snare drum where it's, where it's hitting you, you know, add just a touch of that. And let me do a before and an after, okay? I mean, that, how do you deny how great that is? Just Neves are uh, just a really special thing. Instead of overheads, let's switch to toms. And let's, uh, yeah, I've got a nice little spot here demoed up. Uh, and let's listen to what the Neve can do. So I'm going to start with uh, the same thing. Get a little, let's get a little preamp gain out of it. Okay, we can't add a whole lot before we start hearing some distortion that is a little too... Uh, raunchy, we'll say, <laughs> and we have a choice here on a Neve. You know, do we do we add attack or do we cut something? Most of the time on Tom Toms, I'm going to cut something. There's just something ugly. Let's let's get that uh, down just a little bit. Add some attack as well. Go to around 110. Add some bottom in. Go to 80 and get rid of that. And I bet you uh, that right there sounds pretty good. A little too much bottom in. Okay, 
Let's do a before and after. So I wanna, I'm just gonna copy those settings over to the other TomTom -tom and I'm gonna take it off of mute and we'll listen. Okay, and here's those Tom Toms without any Neve love. Uh, you know, it's just, what do you say? That, that, that is not the sound of a digital EQ. That is the sound of analog. And uh, Kit did a great job on that. All right, next, because I'm an analog guy, I'm gonna go right to APIs. And this is also Kit. This is a really new product for him. Um, and, and again, it, the preamp gain just has a thing for me. Uh, this, this is a very great analog feeling circuit, but the SSL, just like the Neve, just like the API, there are a lot of great options out there. Uh, Brainworks Plugin Alliance has some great stuff. Waves has versions of all this stuff. Uh, Slate. So uh, this isn't meant to be brand specific. It's the idea of this circuit more, more so. This just happens to be the ones that I'm currently um, loving, if that makes any sense. So let's do the same thing. Let's gain it up a little bit on the kick drum. Just the preamp gain again. Now this one, you don't have to select auto makeup gain. It's, it's built in. Okay, it's, it's, it's only that much better, but it's better. So I, I, you know, I wanna take advantage of that. All right, so let's start dialing in. I love a 550A and a 550B, um, but I'm gonna choose the B just because it'd be most like the, the uh, SSL. So we have you know, uh, the ability to add attack as well as cut something. Let's cut uh, about 250, let, uh, 240, whatever that is. Let, let's try cutting that. That, let's cut that out. Now let's add a little bit of 50 on the bottom. Just a common trick with APIs. Now let's add a little attack at, uh, let's go to about 3K. I think that's what we did on the API. I mean on the SSL. Now we can, you know, this is another on, on, on a pop, you know, stuff where we want the really, the kick to really punch to add some 10K um, just for the shine that, that causes it to, to pop a little bit. That's cool, let's do it before and after. That API thing, man, it's, it's big, but, it, but it's tight big. Whereas the Neve, remember the bottom end on the Neve was boosh, you know, uh, and this, this is contained sounding, but it's still big. That's why you want all these tools in your toolbox. You know, at least that's why I want them in my toolbox. All right, so let, let's move to the snare with API. Give it a listen. Um, let's make these a little bigger for me. Stop right about there. And let's add um, the high pass filter up to about 80 or so. I'm gonna add some, I'm gonna add some snare impact. I'm gonna start at 3K, but it may go up to five. I like the five, but I think what I'll do is I'll use the three for the impact, but and then I will add um, some 10K and to, to, to bring back some of that snappiness. Don't take much. Now let's add, let's try 100 on the bottom, although we may go up to 200. I feel like I'm liking the 200, uh, even though on the Neve, I liked the 110. Same thing, let's do a before and after. Very cool, I love that sound. So let's, um, let's, do, let's do Tom's with, with the API, why not? At least one of them. And let me find a spot where they are working together. Right there. Put my looper on. And let's unbypass it. Let's try the preamp gain right from the gate. Right, right, right out of the gate. 
seems to be a sweet spot. Let's take everything below about 80 cycles out. Let's start finding what we want to cut. There's some head flap right around 700 cycles that I don't like. Some, something in the tuning that, you know, that's just an ugly spot. One thing I'm going to tell you about an API EQ is that it's proportional. So as you cut, it's not, it's not moving up and down like the Neve did. It's going like this. It's getting deeper and, and, and narrower. So you can go pretty drastic on an API and it still sounds good, you know? So a little of that ugly is gone. So now let's start adding the good. Let's go to about 5K. Now let's add a little 100, 100 cycles on the bottom for some punch. Now let's add just a little 10K for some snap, you know, some air around on, uh, the attack. Stop right about there. Let's do it before and after. Okay, cool. But you, you hear how tight? The Neve, it sounded huge. On the uh, API, it sounds tight, you know, focused, uh, which both options are great. So let's do a before and after on that. Awesome, awesome. I just, I just love channel strips. Okay, so that said, we have went through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven plugins that I love. All right, so now what I want to do, let's just do a combination. Uh, let's put Tom's would be Neve. Overheads are going to be the um, SSL. The kick will be, how about the API? And the snare will be SSL. Let's do that. And let's see what we have going right now. Okay, massive difference. Now, here's, here's, here's a freebie, because you're, you're gonna like this. My next favorite plugin is an 1176. And there's a lot of great ones out there. And what I do is I have a parallel bus here, where as you can see, my snare drums are being sent to what I call Squisher. And that's right here. That's this, 1176. Uh, fastest attack possible, and a, a generally a slow rele slower release, which is still fast on 1176. And I'm gonna let you hear what that's doing by itself because it's not pretty. But if I add that parallel compression to the snare, uh, either just the snare or the toms and the snare or the snare and the toms and a little bit of kick, I get more impact as well as sustain. Check this out. All right, so the, watch right here where I, uh, when I bypass this. Okay, so I'm gonna let a couple bars go by without parallel compression, then I'm gonna add it. And remember, this is a free 1176, but any of them will do. That's hard not to love, right? Okay, I've got one last plug in, and that is music like this, and in many modern genres, where all the time, where samples are just a part of it. And to me, you know, the best uh, sample um, replacer software is still the Slate. It just, it, it's accurate. I've had others that, that I love the, uh, certain things about, but then I have to go in and, you know, kind of line up some of the places where it missed. And this, this just always gets it right, which gets me working faster. But what I can do here is I've loaded up a bunch of presets that I love I can turn on my, my trigger track and I can just mute, uh, you know, one and then listen to the next one. It's just fast for me to turn the snare on and find the one. I can load up like seven of them at a time in a preset and find the one that matches the sound I'm, I'm looking for. Like that one does. That's a killer. What is that? That's a mahogany five and a half inch drum. So let's just hear the difference. I'll mute the sample, then I'll let it. Uh, I'll bypass it so you can hear the difference. If we want to get really nasty, we can take that uh, snare sample and also send that to parallel track, and it, then it's going to sustain even longer.
All right, guys. So that's just a little bit of my, my method, my thinking, and maybe eight, 10, I don't even know how many plugins that was that I'm currently relying on really heavily. And at that point, you know, one of them we talked about earlier, but at this point is when I'm going to turn on the, the, the limiter, the SSL limiter here and kind of, and I'll kind of show you what I'm doing with it. That's about it. I'm just making sure that at moments where, let's say the snare and the cymbals are hitting at the same time, real aggressive fill on the toms and the snares at the same time, and you know the stereo, the, the, the level to that bus is jumping up, I can control it. I can cap it so it doesn't negatively affect my stereo bus compression. Guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. These are my favorite drum plugins currently. Ask me a month from now and we'll see. <laughs> Happy mixing, guys. Mm -hmm.